Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be doing full face makeup look using only products that were a bit of a disappointment to me. So let's get started. Welcome if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor, thank you so very much for joining me today. My name is Maika, I'm from the Netherlands and I come on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, try out new Essence and Catrice products, but also trying to get the use out of my products and really sort of testing them out, seeing what I think. Sometimes I use things up as well and I do regular shop my stashes to sort of track my usage of my products for sure. And I am currently in the midst of showing you my annual makeup declutter and I thought what better time than to come on here and show you a full face of makeup with products that were either on the chopping block that I got rid of or that I still kept around but that just didn't really meet my expectations. So you do need to know that none of the products I will be showing you today I think of as bad products but these all had something going for them that I felt just didn't meet my expectations or they just didn't live up the hype to the hype for me. So that's what we're coming where we're coming from with today's video. Uh, and we're just going to chat about these products as I'm putting them on my face. So uh, let's just get started. Now I say this is going to be full face, but there are a couple of products such as powder and setting spray where I really feel I don't have anything that would fit the category, but I still want to do a uh, want to do a full face makeup look. So there are going to be a couple of products here, I'm sure, that don't really fit the bill but we're just going to get started with primer first because I love a good primer. I love trying out Essence and Catrice ones for sure. They come out with new ones every single six months and Catrice just recently launched the new Hydrator Plump and Fresh Primer. And based on the name, based on the packaging, I had my hopes up so high that this would be similar to their old Fresh It Up Primer. That is one of my favorites. It's a dupe for the Smashbox Primerizer and I really love how hydrating it is and how that sits on my skin. Is this still a fair, like, good hydrating primer? Yes, but I feel it's nothing like the Fresh It Up, which is why this, even though it's lovely, uh, but it's more of a gel texture, like you can already see when I pump it out, like it's a bit more firm and it definitely has more of a, like, gel, jelly kind of texture, which there's nothing wrong with that, it can be really pleasant on a skin. But I just don't feel it's as nice as that old one. So I did put it in a, uh, when I did my first impression using these new Catrice products, I did sort of do this side by side. And I felt that the other one was far more hydrating than this one is. This feels very pleasant, a little cooling on the skin though. So yeah, this is a good primer. Like if I judge it by just, is it a good primer for me, for sure. But is it as good? as the OG, I would have to disagree there. Now a product that you may have seen already in my declutter or not, I don't, I'm pre-filming this so I'm not really sure when it's gonna go up, but the Revolution Prime and Lock Eyeshadow Primer was okay. It's just not as good as my favorite, the Milani Eyeshadow Primer. So that's why the Revolution Prime and Lock ended up in my declutter, because I just felt that after ha having it in my shop my stash for a few months, it just didn't always work really well with what I wanted. Um, I tend to double prime my lids at all times just to make sure that A, my eyeshadow wears, plus B, I get the intensity of the shades that I want and the blendability. Um, because I've got quite hooded slash deep set eyes. So for me, a good primer is essential. And this, also with how big it is. Like, it's giant. It's as big as a concealer. And I'm not, I can't really read anymore how much product this came with. But it says on the tube that it comes with far less product than it, you might expect as well. So it's a bit of a weird one for me. And I've been able to make it work just fine. Like, I can use this for sure. But with how much product you get in here and the way it worked, I just felt it wasn't adding enough to my makeup routine. And i much rather go back to my Milani. Um, because that is just one that, whenever I use that, the Milani eyeshadow primer, it's such a good one. Uh, it works really well when I want to just like, you know, keep my shadow in place, because that's what I use it for. Uh, and then uh, I like it, like to let it set like I do now, so I, when I do my face primer, I do my eye primer next. It can sit and like settle 
down for a minute, I feel that that really helps with the longevity of my eyeshadow. So, it works, but it just wasn't my favorite, and this is now, for some reason, pilling quite badly. Not sure what's going on there. Then for foundation, I wanted to put in a foundation in today's video that I still would like to use, but that wasn't perfect for me. So this is something I didn't declutter. This is the Flower Light Illusion uh, Foundation in the shade Porcelain L1. The reason why this was a disappointment to me wasn't the actual foundation. It's the shade range. And that definitely has to do with availability. Where I live, the Netherlands, we sometimes don't get a lot of products. And if we get products, we don't always get the full shade range that might be available in places such as Germany, the UK, or the US. They will very often only launch a very limited amount of shades. And especially with drugstore brands like Flower, it can then be very difficult to find your actual shade without going to countries where the uh, shade range is available because a lot of drugstore brands just aren't available online. With things like Maybelline and L'Oreal, it's gotten a little bit better. We can now buy that from the UK. Um, but then again, a lot of the launches that Maybelline and L'Oreal have been doing that are announced in the US, I have yet to see on the European market. So drugstore products can be a bit difficult to uh, get your hands on. And yeah, while Porcelain L1 is a bit too dark, I still really liked the actual, uh, like the actual foundation itself. So that's why this was a disappointment because I was so excited when I finally saw Flower Beauty launching in the Netherlands. Like it took such a long time for them to come to Europe and then they were available, I think, in the UK first from QVC. So everybody was like super exciting, excited going like, ooh, when will they, will they come to the Netherlands? And then they come to the Netherlands and then what we can get product wise is just, it's a little underwhelming to be quite fair. Like we don't have any of the eyeshadows that people are raving about. We just have this foundation. We have, I think one of their glosses and the blushes and a concealer. And that's all the flower beauty makeup we can buy, which is such a shame because the range looks so lovely. And then I feel like then we get the brand and then we don't get everything. <laughs> So yeah, let me blend this in and then we'll chat concealer next. So that is what the Flower Beauty foundation looks like on my skin. As you can see, it's not that offensive. Like it doesn't look Oompa Loompa orange. It's not like five shades too dark. It's just a hair too dark and a hair too yellow. And especially around this area, maybe if I turn this way, you can see perhaps better. Um, it just, it doesn't fully match and it's making me look a little bit sickly because it's just quite a yellow and then a little bit too deep. So I think that just, this just needs a little bit more pink to, for it to really work on me. And it needs to be just a little bit lighter for sure as well. So yeah, this also, I remember oxidized also. So this may be in like 30 minutes to an hour, possibly already once I've finished filming this video. This may actually look a little differently than it does now because I remember dark this darkening on me quite a bit. So it's such a lovely texture and I love the wear time this gives, but the shade is just not great. For concealer, I've chosen the Charlotte Tilbury, uh, what's this called again? It's her corrector in the shade Fair. And the reason why I put this in, like, I try a lot of drugstore and like higher end stuff and usually the drugstore area I still feel is more hit and miss. Maybe also because I do a little bit more research before I buy into more expensive brands. Um, so I will have done a little bit more homework, looked for swatches much more than with drugstore products which I just kind of buy and then hope for the best. Uh, but this corrector from Charlotte Tilbury, it's, it's good. It's a good product, don't get me wrong. It's just that in her range, I feel that so many of her products are very warm toned and I wish she could, she, she could come out with a different kind of concealer that would still work on my quite dry skin. I have swatched her actual, I think it's called her Magic Concealer or whatever. Everything is either Magic or Pillow Talk in her line. Um, so when I was shopping for a full face of Charlotte Tilbury, I didn't really go with her concealer because I was like, a, it's got one of those like sponge tip applicators, which I abhor. Um, and so I went with the corrector instead. And this is still, it's not doing enough correction because it's not peachy toned enough for it to really work on me, which is why today this is just getting used 
as a concealer because on my dark circles it just doesn't even really do all that much. So this is definitely a product where I'm like, okay, Charlotte Silbury, this is like avoiding your range, come out with a more hydrating concealer. Can, can we do that? I think that if Charlotte Tilbury did something that is similar to the Glossier Stretch Concealer, I think a lot of people would like to see that from her. But her line definitely at first when things launched was very full coverage and like matte and like this, it's very much like this Hollywood glam sort of vibe, which isn't really necessarily my thing. So this is pretty much the only concealer type product that Charlotte Tilbury did that really worked for me when I had a look at her range. And that just was a bit of a disappointment to me. So I'm quickly going to powder my face with the Kiko Flawless Snow Radiant Fusion Powder in 01. This is a lovely powder, nothing wrong with this one. This is not part of the disappointing products for sure. And this is currently in my Shop My Stash. Also currently in my Shop My Stash is these two Catrice uh, eyebrow products. One of the things that I always find very disappointing about Catrice is that if you find products you like, you have to be very diligent with repurchasing before they discontinue them because Catrice, and especially in their brow products, just tend to discontinue things left, right, and center because they change up their line every six months, just like Essence does. And sometimes they launch really good things and you're like, oh, wow, I really, really enjoy this. Uh, but then you sort of need to rush and before you have a chance to use up a product, They've already updated their line and the product you loved so much has already been discontinued. So for me, that is, you know, a good thing for this channel because I, that means I can buy new products and try them out and do videos with. Um, that's for sure. But it's a bit of a disappointment that if you find something you really like, it just doesn't really stay around for a very long time. I think I did a full face makeup look last year though with a lot of Essence and Catrice products that weren't discontinued that I remember being around way back in the day, like six, seven, eight years ago, and that they just never discontinued. So if you wanna know what's still around in the line, then make sure you check out that video because a lot of those products are still available. But when it comes to these brow products in particular, I was a little bit disappointed in this brow gel. I like it enough to be able to use it up, but I already know that most likely this brow gel, which is the Clean ID Hydro Brow Gel, that it just won't get usage to the point where I can actually use it up because it's a clear brow gel that comes in clear packaging. And now I'm going to sound a little bit like I'm just hating on this product for the sake of hating on this product, but after now using it for a few months, a little bit of the brow product I'm using is, and a bit of the foundation that's already on my skin gets dispensed into this product every single time I use it. And it's looking absolutely atrocious, which is why I preferred tinted brow gels and why I also prefer it if my brow gel comes in a actual plastic container that is not see-through so that we don't have to see this horror thing. And with brow gels, for some reason, I always struggle with using them up because they tend to smell funky after just a couple of months. So that's why I tend to go through brow gel quite quickly. The only one I have found that doesn't do that for me is the Essence Make Me Brow. Everything else, after two or three months of use, it starts to smell really badly the minute you open it and then you know it's time to chuck it. And then for cheek products, I definitely have a couple of things to chat to you about. The first thing I want to mention is this bronzer from Rival Hearts Me. This is their tropical bronzer in the shade Waikiki. And this is such a lovely bronzer, you guys. This is so, so lovely in terms of texture and the way it applies. It's spot on. But if you're someone like me who doesn't like overly fragranced makeup, this is not going to be your cup of tea and this is something that I have disliked in a lot of my makeup products and it's always a reason for me to declutter them um, because if a, a, if it's this badly fragranced, like I put this in a shop my stash and I love the look of this product just so much, like it's such a good shade for me and this is a German drugstore brand that is like just a couple of euros per product, like it's really really affordable. So I want to be able to recommend these things, but then this brand does this and like I get where they're coming from with this because it's sort of like they're trying to emulate that 
Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer kind of vibe, but they've just completely taken it the wrong way. They've added actual literal fragrance to this product, and it's so strong that when I was using this every single day, I was literally using it like this. <laughs> So for me, this just had to go, not because I dislike the product itself, it's a bit like the Flower Beauty really, like it's a lovely product on, but with the kind of makeup collection I have, I don't need to keep around products that aren't spot on perfect, so that's why that bronzer, as much as I love the look of this on my skin, like look at my skin, it looks lovely, um, but it's just not perfect. And I've got a brush hair tickling my nose, hold on. Then, I already mentioned Catrice updating their line every single six months and just announced and just launched is this new Kissed by the Light Illuminating Powder from Essence. This is in the shade Star Kissed and this is something that I decided to keep around but I still want to put it in this video because it was a little bit of a disappointment to me. Um, this product in particular because in terms of a highlighter it's really not that exciting. And I was hoping actually when I bought this that this could be a glowy blush because it has the pink running through. But for some reason it doesn't pick up any of the pink when you swatch this. It's just a beige, so I've been using it as a highlighter mostly. And it's pretty, it's very pretty. But like a trace, Essence just discontinues products left, right and center. And I feel that both Essence and Catrice actually haven't really come out with a lot of exciting cheek products lately. Like, I think in the past two years they haven't really come out with anything exciting in terms of blush or highlighter. Like, it's just been a bit, you know, like minimal pickings, you could say. Like, they'll do this and then they come out with two shades and one is supposed to be darker, but on me that worked as a bronzer and it just it just wasn't perfect. So, I want to always be very excited, excited for these new Catrice and Essence launches for sure but very often I just find them a little lackluster and I know that by now I think a lot of people are watching my Essence and Catrice first impression videos, especially the Essence ones, and I think a lot of people are thinking that I'm just trying to hate on these products. Trust me, I'm not. I'm looking for the good things. It's just that both Essence and Catrice, but I feel especially Essence, is so hit or miss with what they do in their line that it can just be very difficult to find good things and their launches aren't always the best. Maybe I'm just overly critical, I don't know, but I just, I'm just not super duper exciting, excited all the time for these new products that they launch. Sometimes I wish they would do away with the biannual update and they would keep around products for longer that a lot of people love. I think if they were, would focus on that more, that it would just work a little bit better in 2022. I'm just thinking, because they've been doing this like biannual update for more than a decade, so I think like from a sustainability point of view, I think it's better if they were to keep around products for a longer period of time. But that's just me. And then, sadly, this was another declutter for me. This Kiko blush. This is so pretty. It's their Precious Rituals Long Lasting Vegan Blush. And it's got a stunning design on the front. It's so pretty. But one of the reasons why I don't do... Uh, videos for a lot of the Kiko products that they release because I think Kiko comes out with a limited edition like every two months or so so that could easily be great content for my channel I know a lot of people would love watching me doing that and I, I get requests can you do more Kiko videos and I'd love to but I'm far too fair-skinned to make most of their products work I thought the Precious Rituals line looked absolutely stunning, but when I started trying, especially the cheek product products, the bronzer, too dark, the highlighter, too dark, the blushes, too dark. So I don't want to only buy products to put in videos and then never be able to go back to them again. It just doesn't really work for me. So that's why I sort of make the exception for Essence and Catrice but I don't want to add another product, like another brand to that list of products that I'm just like using that just sit there. Plus, another thing you should know about Kiko, like I've been watching the brand for some years now, and even though this looks differently again, because it's probably like a hair pink or more pink than something they've done before, a lot of their limited edition products are so, so similar. It's like they kind of 
pull from a color chart and it always kind of looks the same but with different packaging which is another reason why I feel that if I were to buy into all of these different Kiko collections that they do, that I would just end up with so many products that are so incredibly similar. Especially when you look in store uh, to see what is out, then apart from their regular line that is around all year, they really don't have that many things that are very different or exciting or unique. And that's why I just want to be very careful with what I do bring in and what I don't bring into my collection. So let me double prime my lids and then we'll talk eyeshadow next. If you don't know, if you're new here and you've never seen me do this before, I use a MAC paint pot in Painterly and a cream colored eyeshadow to add another primer to my lid to cancel out the color of my lid. The eyeshadow is going to help things blend. I know that a lot of people prefer a sticky base. I personally do not and the blocking out the color of my lid is going to help with the shadows to actually show up true to color on my eyes. Um, and I always use up one eyeshadow a year and it's usually the eyeshadow I use to set my eyeshadow primer with so because that gets used every single day without fail which is why I like to keep it in a separate container but for eyeshadow we're going to be talking about I think <sighs> the most disappointing eyeshadow palette I have tried in a long time Nabla side by side um, I'm pretty sure that by the time this video goes up, you will not have seen my eyeshadow palette declutter yet, but I can tell you that I decluttered this eyeshadow palette and I kind of knew it the minute I tried it. And this is, I think, similarly what I struggle with with some Kiko products is that Nabla also in this eyeshadow palette where I think if you have a medium skin tone and a warm undertone, you are going to absolutely adore this. It's just with my coloring, with the way things work on my skin tone, this was just a bit too much of a clash. I also struggled blending some of these shades. And in the end, these two shades, these two shades, um, these two shades, like there were just so many shades in here that I felt showed up similarly on my skin tone. Where I was like, I don't, I didn't need all of those shades. So this could have been like, a 10 to 12 pan and I would have been happy. My favorite row would definitely be these like reddish tones here. Uh, these were all far too similar for me and the cool tones in here are gray. And if these had been browns and cool tones, I think this, pro uh, this palette would have worked much better for me, but the grays are too stark of a contrast with the warm tones that we get in here that it just wasn't my favorite. So today, I'm just going to do a very basic eye. I'm just going to use these two shades just to do a look with this, but I have another video that I wanna film after this. So I wanna wear a very neutral eye look so that I can film that next video because that's going to be a lipstick video. So I need to wear something. Um, so I think this will be perfect. So this in the crease, this all over the lid, maybe this in the lower lash line, something, something nice and easy and inoffensive. That's what we're gonna do. Um, so I'm just going to whack that on and then I'll be right back with you. So that is the look with the Nabla side my side that I did real quickly and now I remember again why this just wasn't perfect for me. I had quite a bit of trouble blending this shade. It was just a little bit patchy on me I feel. So I did go in with a little bit, little bit of the base shade to just to help it a little bit. I put this in the inner corner and this shimmer it just doesn't really do a whole lot on me which for today is perfect. But I just wanted a bit more from that and this shade is just a little bit too reddish toned. So for me... 
it just wasn't a perfect palette and I know a lot of people love this and hyped it up a lot but for me it just wasn't perfect because these shades just aren't the best with my complexion. Not saying this cannot work, it doesn't mean I cannot make it work, it's just that with the kind of collection that I have, <clears throat> I literally have a palette that does this, but then perfect for me. So that's why this sadly had to go in my eyeshadow palette declutter. So for lips, I've got two mentions, again, an Essence product, and the reason why I wanted to put this in here is because the Essence lipsticks just are never my favorite. I've tried a lot of their lines over the years, but Essence lipsticks tend to be quite drying on my lips in a very weird way, like they don't feel drying, but whenever I've worn a, an Essence lipstick, like I need to slap on the lip balm afterwards, because it just doesn't really make me make my lips feel all that great. Plus, I feel that Essence lipsticks have a bit of a weird fragrance to them, mostly. And that's just not my favorite. This is one of their cool collagen shades. This is in the shade 203. And I just wanted to, you know, put it on here. It's going to be a very browny look today. And this, it's not an offensive color. Like, Essence can do good lip products, let me tell you. When it comes to their shade ranges, I have my doubts sometimes, but, you know, they, they know how to do a lipstick shade for sure. Uh, and I was hoping that this could be like a My Lips But Better kind of shade. But what I just didn't love about this line in particular is that it has a cooling sensation that does it has absolutely no function <laughs> so their lip products tend to be a little bit gimmicky the shade ranges while good just aren't that exciting like they're not really adding anything new to what's already on the market they tend to dupe themselves um very often their lines are like multiple shades of nudes which is great for like different skin tones, but I don't need that all the time, which is why I end up decluttering my Essence lipsticks a lot, because they're just not my favorite. Like I have other lipsticks that I prefer, also at a drugstore price point, and especially if we talk high end, because I think that if there is an area of makeup where I feel where price point really makes a difference, it's with lip products. And another lipstick, lip product that I wasn't wowed about, but it got a lot of hype, was the Maybelline Lifter Gloss. I have mine in the shade Moon, and I thought I could add a bit of sparkle to what I've got going on today. And this, I had just expected more from. Like, again, it has a bit of a, like, cooling sensation almost. Like, it, it has an effect. Um or at least it, it has something in it that makes your lips tingle a little bit, but I feel it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, and again, I didn't love the shade on me either. I'm now layering it over that lipstick and it's pretty much disappeared. Like, it's like you're not wearing anything and I've got naturally quite pigmented lips. So this just wasn't giving me enough in terms of color. If I wore this by itself, because the cool collagen is quite a hydrating formula, so that's making this a bit more pleasant. But again, I found this to be weirdly drying for a lip gloss, and with all the lip glosses I have, this just really ended up at the bottom of all of the lip glosses I tried. So that's it, those are all, those are all of the products that I wanted to share with you in today's full face of makeup. As you can see, like, it's not bad makeup, not at all, not at all. That's what I was, we've been telling you from the start, that this makeup is all decent makeup. It works, it's nice, nice products that can work for a lot of different people, but for me, they just weren't perfect, they didn't tickle that itch. Um, that's what I'm definitely looking for. It didn't bring me joy as Marie Kondo would have it. So that's why these products definitely went into this video of a full face of disappointing products. So I hope you really enjoyed watching today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week. So I hope you'd like to stay tuned and I hope you, you would like to stick around for another video. Have a great day everybody. Bye bye.